Okay, so in this class we are going to study about users and groups management. So each and every process that runs in Linux that is run by a specific user. For example, currently I have logged in as the root user. So everything that is running behind the scenes or um, or I am running them myself, they are run by this root user, right? So there are two types of users in Linux. One is the admin whose name is root and he has all the rights and whereas the other user that is the ordinary user. One is the root user and the other set of users is the ordinary user. They are also called regular users and they can be n in number whereas root user is always one. And depending upon the requirement of the organization, root user can add a number of users. And every every user that is added in our system that is uh, that takes up a space in Linux and that is in the slash home directory. So if we add a user with name guest, he will have his home directory inside slash home with its name, right? And every uh, user uh, user's information is added in some files, some configuration files of Linux, which are slash, which are in slash etc directory. So we will look up those files first. One file is I'm going to open those files by using VIM editor. So one is PAWSWD file. This is the file which contains information about all the users. We'll discuss it in detail. Second file is the group file. It has information about all the groups. And the third file is the shadow file. Right. And there is a command if I run id, it is displaying me my attributes. For example, I have logged in as root user. So the person who is running this command that has a user id 0 and its name is root and other attributes are given. Right. And if you run ps command, that will display all the processes ps and ef all the processes in detail so all the processes these are the processes which are running and they are run by this user root user so these processes are running behind the scenes and it is displaying that everything that is running in your system all the processes which are running your in your system they are run by a specific user right so this is the UID, this is the user which is running these processes, right? These are the commands, these are the processes which are running, right? So let's try to add a user. To add a user, we have user add command. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a user with name guest. So this is the command user add space guest. If I press enter, this particular user has been added. This is an ordinary user, right? So ordinary user or regular user, they don't have as much privileges as root user has. And P A S W D. This is the command by which you you can set the password for this particular user, right? So P A S W D. And after that, I need to write the name of the user whose password I'm going to change. I'm going to change or I'm going to set the password for the first time. So, PAWSWD space guest. Enter. So, it is asking for the new password. You can enter any password. I have used a simple string. So, it is a bad password. But even then, it will accept it. So, as root is setting it, so we have set its password. You guest user's password and uh, now if you view the contents of this file etc password file awd if 
you view the contents of this file, it will display this new entry. This thing is appended in the file. Right? So, it is displaying that this is the user that we have just added. Actually, this file has various fields and each field is separated with the help of columns. Right? You can view these columns. And what these fields say, first thing is the name of user, so guess is the name of user. Second field tells that this user is password protected, we need, we have assigned its password and it, and for logging in we need its password, right. And after that, this is the user ID, this is the group ID, each and every user is associated with a primary group. Right, so when we add a user, the, a group with the same name is also added. Right, so all the processes, all the files which will be created by this user will have its owner as this user and its group as the same name group. Right, we will discuss in detail. So, this is the name of the user and password protected after that this is the user id this is the group id and then this field it is empty and uh, basically it it holds the user full name we can set it afterwards also and uh, this is not very necessary and after that this is the home directory of this user so guest has the home directory inside slash home with its name the same name and after that, this shell which is assigned to this user, bin bash, right? So this file has various other entries also, but all the ordinary users they are appended in this file, and their ID will start from thousand. Right? These are the other inbuilt users which are used by some applications which run some particular applications okay and if you go to the top then this is the entry of the root user root user's id is zero and its home directory is slash root it gets the same shell right and in the same way if you view the contents of i'm opening these files by using vim editor you can view the contents of a file by using cat command also it depends upon you so etc and group this is the name of the file so you can see it contains information about the groups so whenever you add any user a group with the same name is also added so guest and its id is thousands thousand other groups which are added in the system they are also displayed here and these are some secondary groups HR, programmers, team, class, these are some secondary groups which are already added in my system. And uh, after this colon, it next field will be the users which are added in this group. So, a user can be a part of some secondary groups also. Right? We'll do it, do it today itself. So, one more file is there which is etc shadow file and this file contains the encrypted password information see this is the password of the guest user encrypted by SHA algorithm SHA512 right so now we have added a user and in the same way we will add a few more users also so user add guest one password guest one I'm setting it password one and guest two oh. I'm not yet added guest two and then password why we are adding these users because we want to 
um, learn the significance of groups also and we want to add these users in a group right so users has been added and uh, their home directories are also created in slash home we can log in with this name also so su is the command so if i write su space guest that means i'm switching the user right so now i have logged in as guest user you can log out and log in again or you can use another terminal also right so I'm going back. You can type exit or you can press Ctrl D. Right. Now, to add a group, we have group add command. So, group add space. I'm going to add a group with name my team. And uh, if you view the content of slash etc slash group file it is displaying my team but this group is empty there is no user in this group we can add a user in a group by using user mod command user mod capital G and then the name of the group and then the name of the user for example I'm going to add guest 1 and guest 2 in the team so viewing again it is displaying my team has guest 1 and guest 2 users right why it is done it is done to make the permissions of a file or a directory work properly so now if you want to delete a group then user del is the command if you want to delete a group then group del is the command group del then space name of the group is hr this was already there and if you want to delete a user then user del is the command user del and after that you need to write the name of the user which you want to delete so if i write guest this user will be deleted but what will happen its home directory will be there in your system its work done by that work done by this user will also be there in your system so if you want to delete that work also then user del space hyphen r and then name of the user it is already deleted so but otherwise you could use this command instead of this right Okay, so few more things about users are there is a command chh. Let's see if I have first. Change user password expiry information. Right, so chh command changes the number of days between password changes and the date of last password change. There are so many things which you can do by using this command. So if you write chh-l, then name of any user, get one, it will display a few attributes about this account. So last password change was 30th October 2017, password expires never. Password inactive never, account expires never, minimum number of days. So these things are written about the account. Now, if you want to add, if you want to um, add an expiry date of this account, how you can do that? Ch hyphen capital E, and after that, 
2017 11 9 and guess one What this command does, this will set the expiry date of this user's account to 9th of November 2017, right? In the same way, we can do a few more things also. If you want to lock a user's account, we have user mod hyphen capital L and then name of the user. You press enter and this the account of this user will be at, will be logged and in the same way we have um, one more command which is used to unlock a user's account that is I fill capital U and then name of the user this is used to unlock a user's account if you want to change a user's shell then we have a command user mod hyphen S, then the shell which you want to assign that is bin sh for example and then name of the user for example guess to user should get bin sh shell instead of getting bin bash shell which is by default right so this command works 